The inspiration behind the silhouette of this shirt dress was one of Elvis Presley's classic western style shirts. I took this style and mixed it with some contemporary gothic imagery that uses a lot of black and 3D shapes wrapped around the body. I have secured a sponsorship with YKK as my collection is highly influenced by the look of zip teeth when stacked together. The yoke has a western style influence, but I have used a row of zip teeth rather than piping. The yoke itself would have been made using stingray skin to create a harsh contrasting texture and also to support the weight of the garment. The colour of this garment is all black, which has been influenced by the classic gothic look, but also Elvis' black leather suit from his 68 comeback special. Cotton duck forms the main body, as it's heavy enough to support the zips, but also has enough stretch for comfort and movement. Elvis was known for his white jumpsuits with oversized collars and cuffs. I have incorporated this style into this shirt dress, but I've used a soft black leather. I have designed a French cuff, a cuff link would be needed to close the cuff. This is a sample of a wire rope clamp. It creates a bulky heavy metal look to the outfit and also includes a theme of using alternative ways of fastenings. Elvis was a lover of peacocks and had dedicated the look of his lounge in Graceland to them. He also had a white peacock suit made which was embezzled with diamantes in the shape of peacock feathers. Therefore, I have designed this outfit to include a peacock feather lining for a splash of colour without taking away the full black gothic look. This garment was produced using a lock stitch machine with a 1cm seam allowance throughout. Top stitching has been used around all the zips connected to the garment, the same way a bluff stitch would to hold the inside seams in place. The silhouette for my second outfit was inspired by Elvis's military uniform. The shirt shape itself is minimal, but the gothic influence comes through with the 3D waves going against the regular body shape. Both the shirt and trouser design has come from experimenting with zip placement on a mannequin. This shirt has a double yoke with a double line of top stitch, neat and precise like a military uniform. The oversized sleeves have leather panels at the shoulder and elbow in order for the zips to be tapped into place. Without these leather panels, the zips would be too heavy and pull on the crepe de chine, which the shirt is made from. Again, outfit two consists of an oversized collar and cuff, both made from the same soft leather as the panels. The cuff includes a gauntlet opening and will be closed using the same wire rope clamp as outfit number one. The centre opening is a concealed button placket, interlined to become more rigid and stable for the buttons and buttonholes. This garment was produced using a lock stitch machine and all seams are concealed on the inside with French seams and the collar, yoke and cuff all have either a single or double layer of top stitching. The trousers to be paired with this shirt would have been made entirely out of zips. Each zip would be sewn one centimetre apart. By starting each zip row further apart and ending with the one centimetre thickness, this curve can be created then by the time you reach the thigh, the rows would level off straight. These trousers include a large side opening as the asymmetric waistline goes from waist to hip. The asymmetric hem complements the asymmetric waistline. As these trousers are made from zips, the zip tape on the inside wouldn't be comfortable, therefore they would be fully lined, all using the same peacock feather lining to match the rest of my collection. The silhouette of the leather jacket has been influenced by Outfit 1's 3D elements and the oversized shape of Outfit 2. The fastening on the jacket would be three sliding barrel locks. This is an alternative use for a fastening. The jacket would be produced using lap felled seams and top stitched around the collar, hem and zip attachment. The jacket lining would be the same as all linings used throughout my collection. Zipped pockets would be placed either side of the jacket under the 3D strip of zips. The silhouette of the dress underneath is simple and form-fitting to mimic the silhouette of outfit one. This distressed look was produced using strips of coloured crepe de chine layered in a chevron pattern. This pattern was influenced by the military chevron badge ranks. These strips of crepe de chine could be produced on the laser cutter to save time and seal the edges to prevent fraying. The colours used in these chevrons relate back to the peacock theme without overpowering with colour. All seams used on the dress would be made using a lock stitch with a 1cm seam allowance. The whole garment would be lined to hide all stitching from the chevrons.